Hello and welcome to another webcast brought to you by Nerd Enterprises Incorporated. We're happy to help you with all of your software training needs. And we are also the cure for your bookkeeping, accounting, and financial management headaches. Sorry, I had to lower my volume. Too much feedback in the background. As I mentioned, we're committed to helping you with your software training needs. And what that means, somebody told me I wasn't looking into the camera enough. I hope this is better. But what that means is I want to show you things. I want to show you how to do things that are going to make your life easier. And recently I did a sort of full-length tutorial for somebody in Microsoft Excel going over how to manipulate data in Excel. So in this brief webcast, I'm going to demonstrate a little bit of what I did for that person, and then I'm going to invite you to email me at seth at nerdenterprises.com, and I will send you the link to watch this full-length tutorial, which I've gotten permission to make available to the general public. It's not a format that I can upload to YouTube, so you'll have to email me, and I'll send you a link. It'll play in your Flash player. YouTube says they accept SWF files, which is a flash video file, but when I try to upload these, it rejects them. And I feel rejected and hurt. YouTube hurts my feelings when they reject my files. But nevertheless, I'm still happy to make it available to you, my loyal video watcher. And so here it is. Let's go into the sharing portion of our meeting here. And I'll blow up the sharing screen to a full-size view so that you can see more better. Oops, I just realized. It's so picky. I have to change a setting here so that you can uh, actually see the screen enlarge on the recording. Now we can share sharing is caring so very quickly what you're seeing here is a spreadsheet that I'm in the this is a work in progress I'm listing all of these tutorials that I've created and giving a brief description and this way I can quickly and easily reference them and send links out to people if they want to watch a, 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 a tutorial on a particular subject and Excel is great for this sort of thing. Excel will let you list things just like this. And you'll see I've got this nicely formatted. And I have my source here because there's basically two different things I use. There's what you're watching now, which is the Acrobat Connect Pro. And the format that I've just mentioned, which I can't get up on YouTube, at least not now, which is done in Adobe Captivate, which creates a Flash video file. So this lets me quickly reference exactly if I want if I know that the video I'm looking for was done in Captivate, I can uncheck select all, check off Adobe Captivate, and click OK. And what that does is Excel will now filter the list and only show me those things that have Adobe Captivate listed in column B. The next column is the primary software that I'm instructing on in that tutorial. So if I want to look at things that were created with Adobe Captivate on just QuickBooks, I simply drop the second arrow down, or not second, it's actually the third arrow, next to Software Primary. I unselect where it says Select All, and I check off QuickBooks. And once I'm satisfied that uh, that has happened, I click OK. And so now I've got it down to just Captivate-based tutorials teaching QuickBooks. Now let's say I want to go back and see all QuickBooks, regardless of whether it was Captivate or Connect Pro. Then I check off Select All in that column, and I choose OK. And now it shows me everything. So these are filters. What you're seeing me play with here are called data filters. And you activate those by going to your Data tab and choosing Filter. Now I just clicked it and turned the filters off so it revealed everything in my list. And if I click it again, it puts the arrows back. 
So that's the filters, and this is a powerful way of doing things. You'll also notice that I have a table here that's formatted nicely. It's got rows with alternating colors. And now you can do this manually, but one of the problems with that is that when you start copying and pasting, or especially if you're cutting and pasting and moving things around, it takes the formatting with it so you, you'll lose the consistency of the alternating rows. What's nice about Excel, especially Excel 2007, is they make it really easy for you to create tables. And I'm going to show you very quickly how to do this. Basically what I'm going to do for this brief webcast is I'm going to take this information, go into a new tab, and I'm just going to paste the values so that you can see the raw data, the way it looks without any formatting. We'll format the dates for date. Control and the number one brings up my format cells. I go to date. Use the double digit format. Other than that, you've got just the raw data here. And what I can do is highlight this whole entire range now. I can turn off my grid lines because they're ugly. And in Excel 2007, I come over here where it says format as table. Couldn't be easier. I click format as table and I choose whichever format I like. I think the one we were just looking at is this one here. And Excel assumes which range I want to format as a table and asks me to double check it. And if you have this checked off where it says my table has headers, then Excel will assume that your very first row in the range are your headers, which of course here is in fact the case. So then I want to click OK once I'm done. And then we have the exact table that I did. And in fact, Excel automatically puts my filter arrows on. It assumes that if I want to set something up as a table, I'm going to want to use filters. Now look what you can do with a date filter. Excel, especially the table option in the filters, recognizes dates and so you can subcategorize dates based on month and you can even go to a specific day within that month so if I wanted to see all the webcasts that I recorded in 2009 I just uncheck 2008 and choose OK and now it shows me just those things that I recorded in 2009 now in the context of this table it may not seem like it's that relevant although it might be helpful to know all for me to know all the recordings I've done in 2009 and bear in mind by no means is this a complete list so it becomes even more useful when you have a really long list of things like I said this is a work in progress I've recorded a lot of stuff over the past year year and a half and I'm just barely beginning to populate this list so that I can quickly and easily reference them all but this is just to give you an idea of how you can manipulate data I again invite you to email me at Seth at nerdenterprises.com and I'll email you a link to watch a full-length tutorial on how to use your filters and how to write some formulas in order to set conditional formatting such that you can actually go 10 steps further than what I've just shown you as far as manipulating data goes and as far as being able to really take a large amount of data and filter it down to just the information you want so that you can make it useful and do whatever you need to with that information. There's a lot of stuff in there that's really powerful. So email me, Seth at NerdEnterprises.com, and I will email you back with a link to watch the full-length tutorial on conditional formatting, sorting, filters, VLOOKUP, and how to, how to integrate. A, uh, it's actually a, a, conditional form, a conditional formula into the conditional formatting. It's 
a little complex, but I'm sure that you'll get it when you review it. You might re need to review it a couple of times, and you'll see how powerful this is in terms of what you can do in Excel to take large amounts of data and filter it down to just a very specific uh, set of criteria as far as what you want to get out of a larger set of data. So hopefully you find this helpful. We'll look forward to seeing you online. Visit us on the web, www.nerdenterprises.com. And check back with us soon for another great webcast.